Thomas Sankara French pronunciation TMAS Ka the 21st of December 1949 to the 15th of October 1987 was a Burkina Bay revolutionary Marxist pan-africanist and president of Burkina Faso from 1983 to 1987 Viewed by supporters as a charismatic and iconic figure of revolution he is sometimes referred to as Africa's Che Guevara a group of revolutionaries seized power on behalf of Sankara who was under house arrest at the time in a popularly supported coup in 1983. Aged just 33, Sankara became the president of the country that still retained its colonial name, Upper Volta, with the goal of promoting the well-being of the poorest people in the country by eliminating corruption and the dominance of the former French colonial power among other things. He immediately launched one of the most ambitious programs for social, ecological, gender and economic change ever attempted on the African continent. To symbolize this new autonomy and rebirth, he renamed the country from the French colonial Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, land of upright man. His foreign policies were centered on anti-imperialism, with his government eschewing all foreign aid, pushing for odious debt reduction, nationalizing all land and mineral wealth and averting the power and influence of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. His domestic policies were focused on preventing famine with agrarian self-sufficiency and land reform, prioritizing education with a nationwide literacy campaign and promoting public health by vaccinating 2,500,000 children against meningitis, yellow fever and measles. Other components of his national agenda included planting over 10 million trees to halt the growing desertification of the Sahel, doubling wheat production by redistributing land from feudal landlords to peasants, suspending rural poll taxes and domestic rent and establishing an ambitious road and railway construction program to tie the nation together. On the localized level, Sankara also called on every village to build a medical dispensary, and had over 350 communities build schools with their own labor. Moreover, his commitment to women's rights led him to outlaw female genital mutilation, forced marriages and polygamy while appointing women to high governmental positions and encouraging them to work outside the home and stay in school, even if pregnant. In order to achieve this radical transformation of society, Sankara increasingly exerted authoritarian control over the nation. He eventually banned unions and a free press, which he believed could stand in the way of his plans. To counter his opposition in towns and workplaces around the country, he also prosecuted corrupt officials, alleged counter-revolutionaries and lazy workers in popular revolutionary tribunals. Additionally, as an admirer of Fidel Castro's Cuban Revolution, Sankara set up Cuban-style committees for the defense of the revolution. His revolutionary programs for African self-reliance made him an icon to many of Africa's poor. Sankara remained popular with most of his country's citizens. However, his policies alienated and antagonized the vested interests of several groups, which included the small, but powerful Burkinabé middle class, the tribal leaders whom he stripped of the long-held traditional right to forced labor and tribute payments as well as France and its ally Ivory Coast. On 15 October 1987, Sankara was assassinated by troops led by Blaise Compaoré, who took Sankara's office shortly after. A week before his assassination, he declared, while revolutionaries as individuals can be murdered, you cannot kill ideas. <inaudible> Early life Thomas Sankara was born Thomas Isidore Noël Sankara on 21 December 1949 in Yako, French Upper Volta as the third of ten children to Joseph and Marguerite Sankara. His father, Joseph Sankara, a gendarme, was of mixed Masi Fulani heritage while his mother, Marguerite Kinda, was of direct Masi descent. He spent his early years in Gaua, a town in the humid southwest to which his father was transferred as an auxiliary gendarme. As the son of one of the few African functionaries then employed by the colonial state, he enjoyed a relatively privileged position. The family lived in a brick house with the families of other gendarmes at the top of a hill overlooking the rest of Gaua. Sankara attended primary school at Bobo Dialasso. He applied himself seriously to his schoolwork and excelled in mathematics and French. He went to church often, and impressed with his energy and eagerness to learn, some of the priests encouraged Thomas to go on to seminary school once he finished primary school. Despite initially agreeing, he took the exam required for entry to the sixth grade in the secular educational system and passed. 
Thomas's decision to continue his education at the nearest lycée Uwezen Kulabali named after a pre-independence nationalist proved to be a turning point. This step got him out of his father's household since the lycée was in Bobo Dialasso, the country's commercial centre. At the lycée, Sankara made close friends, including Fidel II, whom he later named a minister in his government, and Somain Touré, who was in a more advanced class. His Roman Catholic parents wanted him to become a priest, but he chose to enter the military. The military was popular at the time, having just ousted a despised president. It was also seen by young intellectuals as a potentially national institution that might help discipline the inefficient and corrupt bureaucracy, counterbalance the inordinate influence of traditional chiefs and generally help modernize the country. Besides, acceptance into the military academy would come with a scholarship, Sankara could not easily afford the costs of further education otherwise. He took the entrance exam and passed. He entered the military academy of Kadiogo in Ouagadougou with the academy's first intake of 1966 at the age of 17. While there he witnessed the first military coup d'état in Upper Volta led by Lieutenant Colonel Sangale Lamazana the 3rd of January 1966. The trainee officers were taught by civilian professors in the social sciences. Adama Touré, who taught history and geography and was known for having progressive ideas, even though he did not publicly share them, was the academic director at the time. He invited a few of his brightest and more political students, among them Sankara, to join in formal discussions about imperialism, neocolonialism, socialism and communism, the Soviet and Chinese revolutions, the liberation movements in Africa and similar topics outside of the classroom. This was the first time Sankara was systematically exposed to a revolutionary perspective on Upper Volta and the world. Aside from his academic and extracurricular political activities, Sankara also pursued his passion for music and played the guitar. In 1970, 20 years old Sankara went on for further military studies at the Military Academy of Ansarabe, Madagascar, from which he graduated as a junior officer in 1973. At the Ansarab Academy, the range of instruction went beyond standard military subjects, which allowed Sankara to study agriculture, including how to raise crop yields and better the lives of farmers—themes he later took up in his own administration and country. During that period, he read profusely on history and military strategy, thus acquiring the concepts and analytical tools that he would later use in his reinterpretation of Burkina political history. Military career After basic military training in secondary school in 1966, Sankara began his military career at the age of 19 and a year later was sent to Madagascar for officer training at Ansarabe where he witnessed popular uprisings in 1971 and 1972 against the government of Philibert Saranana and first read the works of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, profoundly influencing his political views for the rest of his life. Returning to Upper Volta in 1972, he fought in a border war between Upper Volta and Mali by 1974. He earned fame for his heroic performance in the border war with Mali, but years later would renounce the war as useless and unjust, a reflection of his growing political consciousness. He also became a popular figure in the capital of Ouagadougou. Sankara was a decent guitarist. He played in a band named Tauda Ku Jazz and rode a motorcycle. In 1976, he became commander of the Commando Training Center in Po. In the same year he met Blaise Compaoré in Morocco. During the presidency of Colonel Se Zerbo, a group of young officers formed a secret organization called the Communist Officers Group, Regroupement des Officiers Communistes, or ROC, the best known members being Henri Zongo, Jean-Baptiste Boukari Lingani, Blaise Compaoré and Sankara. Topic. Government posts Sankara was appointed Secretary of State for Information in the military government in September 1981, journeying to his first cabinet meeting on a bicycle, but he resigned on 21 April 1982 in opposition to what he saw as the regime's anti-labor drift, declaring, "...misfortune to those who gagged the people." Malheur à ceux qui bailonnent le pupil. After another coup, the 7th of November 1982, brought to power Major Dr. Jean-Baptiste Oedrogo, Sankara became Prime Minister in January 1983, but he was dismissed the 17th of May and placed under house arrest after a visit by the French President's son and African Affairs Advisor Jean-Christophe Mitterrand. 
Henri Zongo and Jean-Baptiste Boukari Lingani were also placed under arrest. Topic: <inaudible> Presidency. Our revolution in Burkina Faso draws on the totality of man's experiences since the first breath of humanity. We wish to be the heirs of all the revolutions of the world, of all the liberation struggles of the peoples of the Third World. We draw the lessons of the American Revolution. The French Revolution taught us the rights of man. The Great October Revolution brought victory to the proletariat and made possible the realization of the Paris Commune's dreams of justice. A coup d'état organized by Blaise Compaoré made Sankara president on 4 August 1983 at the age of 33. The coup d'état was supported by Libya, which was at the time on the verge of war with France in Chad see History of Chad. Sankara saw himself as a revolutionary and was inspired by the examples of Cuba's Fidel Castro and Che Guevara and Ghana's military leader Jerry Rawlings. As president, he promoted the democratic and popular revolution, Revolution démocratique et populaire, or RDP. The ideology of the revolution was defined by Sankara as anti-imperialist in a speech of the 2nd of October 1983, the Discours d'Orientation Politique (DOP), written by his close associate Valéry Somme. His policy was oriented toward fighting corruption, promoting reforestation, averting famine, and making education and health real priorities. On the first anniversary of his accession in 1984, he renamed the country Burkina Faso, meaning the land of upright people", in Moray and de Jula, the two major languages of the country. He also gave it a new flag and wrote a new national anthem <laughs> <laughs> Creative Sankara Revolution In 1984, Immediately after Sankara took office, he suppressed most of the powers held by tribal chiefs in Burkina Faso. These feudal landlords were stripped of their rights to tribute payments and forced labor as well as having their land distributed amongst the peasantry. This served the dual purpose of creating a higher standard of living for the average Burkinabe as well as creating an optimal situation to induce Burkina Faso into food self sufficiency. Within four years, Burkina Faso reached food sufficiency due in large part to feudal land redistribution and series of irrigation and fertilization programs instituted by the government. During this time, production of cotton and wheat increased dramatically. While the average wheat production for the Sahel region was 1,700 kg per hectare 1, pounds, acre, in 1986, Burkina Faso was producing 3,900 kg per hectare 3, pounds, acre, of wheat the same year. This success meant Sankara had not only shifted his country into food self-sufficiency, but had in turn created a food surplus. Sankara also emphasized the production of cotton and the need to transform the cotton produced in Burkina Faso into clothing for the people. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Health care and public works. Sankara's first priorities after taking office were feeding, housing and giving medical care to his people who desperately needed it. Sankara launched a mass vaccination program in an attempt to eradicate polio, meningitis and measles. In one week, 2.5 million Burkinabé were vaccinated, garnering congratulations from the World Health Organization. Sankara's administration was also the first African government to publicly recognize the AIDS epidemic as a major threat to Africa. Large-scale housing and infrastructure projects were also undertaken. Brick factories were created to help build houses in effort to end urban slums. In an attempt to fight deforestation, the People's Harvest of Forest Nurseries was created to supply 7,000 village nurseries, as well as organizing the planting of several million trees. All regions of the country were soon connected by a vast road and rail building program. Over 700 kilometers 430 miles of rail was laid by Burkina Bay people to facilitate manganese extraction in the Battle of the Rails, without any foreign aid or outside money. These programs were an attempt to prove that African countries could be prosperous without foreign help or aid. 
These revolutionary developments and national economic programs shook the foundations of the traditional economic development models imposed on Africa. Sankara also launched education programs to help combat the country's 90% illiteracy rate. These programs had some success in the first few years. However, wide scale teacher strikes, coupled with Sankara's unwillingness to negotiate, led to the creation of revolutionary teachers. In an attempt to replace the nearly 2,500 teachers fired over a strike in 1987, anyone with a college degree was invited to teach through the Revolutionary Teachers Program. Volunteers received a 10 day training course before being sent off to teach, the results were disastrous. People's Revolutionary Tribunals Shortly after attaining power, Sankara constructed a system of courts known as the Popular Revolutionary Tribunal. The courts were created originally to try former government officials in a straightforward way so the average Burkinabe could participate in or oversee trials of enemies of the revolution. They placed defendants on trial for corruption, tax evasion or counter-revolutionary activity. Sentences for former government officials were light and often suspended. The tribunals have been alleged to have been only show trials, held very openly with oversight from the public. Procedures in these trials, especially legal protections for the accused, did not conform to international standards. Defendants had to prove themselves innocent of the crimes they were charged with committing and were not allowed to be represented by counsel. The courts were originally met with adoration from the Burkinabe people but over time became corrupt and oppressive. So-called lazy workers were tried and sentenced to work for free or expelled from their jobs and discriminated against. Some even created their own courts to settle scores and humiliate their enemies. Topic. Revolutionary defense committees The Committees for the Defense of the Revolution Burkina Faso Comités de Défense de la Revolution were formed as mass armed organizations. The CDRs were created as a counterweight to the power of the army as well as to promote political and social revolution. The idea for the Revolutionary Defense Committees was taken from Fidel Castro, whose Committees for the Defense of the Revolution were created as a form of revolutionary vigilance. Sankara's CDRs overstepped their power, and were accused by some of thuggery and gang-like behavior. CDR groups would meddle in the everyday life of the Burkina Bay. Individuals would use their power to settle scores or punish enemies. Sankara himself noted the failure publicly. The public placed blame for actions of individual CDRs squarely on Sankara. The failure of the CDRs, coupled with the failure of the Revolutionary Teachers Program, mounting labor and middle class disdain as well as Sankara's steadfastness, lead to the regime partially weakening within Burkina Faso. Topic. Women's rights The revolution and women's liberation go together. We do not talk of women's emancipation as an act of charity or because of a surge of human compassion. It is a basic necessity for the triumph of the revolution. Women hold up the other half of the sky. Improving women's status in Burkina Bay society was one of Sankara's explicit goals, and his government included a large number of women, an unprecedented policy priority in West Africa. His government banned female genital mutilation, forced marriages and polygamy, while appointing women to high governmental positions and encouraging them to work outside the home and stay in school even if pregnant. Sankara also promoted contraception and encouraged husbands to go to market and prepare meals to experience for themselves the conditions faced by women. Sankara recognized the challenges faced by African women when he gave his famous address to mark International Women's Day on 8 March 1987 in Ouagadougou. Sankara spoke to thousands of women in a highly political speech in which he stated that the Burkina Bay Revolution was establishing new social relations, which would be upsetting the relations of authority between men and women and forcing each to rethink the nature of both. This task is formidable but necessary. Furthermore, Sankara was the first African leader to appoint women to major cabinet positions and to recruit them actively for the military. Topic. Second Agachur Strip War In 1985, Burkina Faso organized a general population census. 
During the census, some Fula camps in Mali were visited by mistake by Burkinabé census agents. The Malian government claimed that the act was a violation of its sovereignty on the Agachur Strip. Following efforts by Mali asking African leaders to pressure Sankara, tensions erupted on Christmas Day 1985 in a war that lasted five days and killed about 100 people most victims were civilians killed by a bomb dropped on the marketplace in Awahaguya by a Malian MiG plane. The conflict is known as the Christmas War in Burkina Faso. Topic. Criticism Sankara's government was criticized by Amnesty International and other international humanitarian organizations for violations of human rights, including extrajudicial executions, arbitrary detentions and torture of political opponents. The British development organization Oxfam recorded the arrest and torture of trade union leaders in 1987. In 1984, seven individuals associated with the previous regime were accused of treason and executed after a summary trial. A teacher's strike the same year resulted in the dismissal of 2,500 teachers. Thereafter, non governmental organizations and unions were harassed or placed under the authority of the Committees for the Defense of the Revolution, branches of which were established in each workplace and which functioned as organs of political and social control. Popular revolutionary tribunals, set up by the government throughout the country, placed defendants on trial for corruption, tax evasion or «counter-revolutionary» activity. Procedures in these trials, especially legal protections for the accused, did not conform to international standards. According to Christian Morrison and Jean-Paul Azam of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the climate of urgency and drastic action in which many punishments were carried out immediately against those who had the misfortune to be found guilty of unrevolutionary behavior, bore some resemblance to what occurred in the worst days of the French Revolution, during the Reign of Terror. Although few people were killed, violence was widespread. The following chart shows Burkina Faso's human rights ratings under Sankara from 1984 to 1987 presented in the Freedom in the World reports, published annually by the United States government-funded Freedom House. A score of 1 is most free and 7 is least free. Point 1. Topic: <laughs> Personal image and popularity. Accompanying his personal charisma, Sankara had an array of original initiatives that contributed to his popularity and brought some international media attention to his government. Topic. Solidarity He sold off the government fleet of Mercedes cars and made the Renault 5 the cheapest car sold in Burkina Faso at that time the official service car of the ministers. He reduced the salaries of well-off public servants including his own and forbade the use of government chauffeurs and first-class airline tickets. He redistributed land from the feudal landlords to the peasants. Wheat production increased from 1,700 kg per hectare 1, pounds, acre to 3,800 kg per hectare 3, pounds, acre, making the country food self-sufficient. He opposed foreign aid, saying that he who feeds you, controls you." He spoke in forums like the Organization of African Unity against what he described as neo-colonialist penetration of Africa through Western trade and finance. He called for a united front of African nations to repudiate their foreign debt. He argued that the poor and exploited did not have an obligation to repay money to the rich and exploiting. In Ouagadougou, Sankara converted the army's provisioning store into a state-owned supermarket open to everyone, the first supermarket in the country. He forced well-off civil servants to pay one month's salary to public projects. He refused to use the air conditioning in his office on the grounds that such luxury was not available to anyone but a handful of Burkinabés. As president, he lowered his salary to $450 a month and limited his possessions to a car, four bikes, three guitars, a refrigerator, and a broken freezer. Topic. Style He required public servants to wear a traditional tunic, woven from Burkina Bay cotton and sewn by Burkina Bay craftsmen. He was known for jogging unaccompanied through Ouagadougou in his track suit and posing in his tailored military fatigues, with his mother of pearl pistol. 
When asked why he did not want his portrait hung in public places, as was the norm for other African leaders, Sankara replied, There are seven million Thomas Sankaras. An accomplished guitarist, he wrote the new national anthem himself. Africa's Che Guevara Che Guevara taught us we could dare to have confidence in ourselves, confidence in our abilities. He instilled in us the conviction that struggle is our only recourse. He was a citizen of the free world that together we are in the process of building. That is why we say that Che Guevara is also African and Burkinab. Sankara is often referred to as Africa's Che Guevara. Sankara gave a speech marking and honoring the 20th anniversary of Che Guevara's 9 October 1967 execution, one week before his own assassination on 15 October 1987. Topic. Assassination On 15 October 1987, Sankara was killed by an armed group with 12 other officials in a coup d'état organized by his former colleague Blaise Compaoré. Deterioration in relations with neighboring countries was one of the reasons given, with Compaoré stating that Sankara jeopardized foreign relations with former colonial power France and neighboring Ivory Coast. Prince Johnson, a former Liberian warlord allied to Charles Taylor, told Liberia's Truth and Reconciliation Commission that it was engineered by Charles Taylor. After the coup and although Sankara was known to be dead, some CDRs mounted an armed resistance to the army for several days. Sankara's body was dismembered and he was quickly buried in an unmarked grave while his widow Mariam and two children fled the nation. Compaoré immediately reversed the nationalizations, overturned nearly all of Sankara's policies, rejoined the International Monetary Fund and World Bank to bring in desperately needed funds to restore the shattered economy and ultimately spurned most of Sankara's legacy. Compaoré's dictatorship remained in power for 27 years until it was overthrown by popular protests in 2014. Topic: <inaudible> Exhumation. The exhumation of what are believed to be the remains of Sankara was started on African Liberation Day, the 25th of May 2015. Once exhumed, the family will formally identify his remains, a long-standing demand of his family and supporters. Permission for an exhumation was denied during the rule of his successor, Blaise Compaoré. In October 2015, one of the lawyers for Sankara's widow Mariam reported that the autopsy had revealed that Sankara's body was riddled with more than a dozen bullets. <laughs> Legacy Africa and the world are yet to recover from Sankara's assassination. Just as we have yet to recover from the loss of Patrice Lumumba, Kwame Nkrumah, Eduardo Mondlane, Amilcar Cabral, Steve Biko, Samora Marshall, and most recently John Garang, to name only a few. While malevolent forces have not used the same methods to eliminate each of these great Pan-Africanists, they have been guided by the same motive, to keep Africa in chains. Twenty years after his assassination, Sankara was commemorated on 15 October 2007 in ceremonies that took place in Burkina Faso, Mali, Senegal, Niger, Tanzania, Burundi, France, Canada and the United States. Topic. List of works Thomas Sankara Speaks, The Burkina Faso Revolution, 1983-87, Pathfinder Press, 1988. ISBN 0-87348-527-0. We Are the Heirs of the World's Revolutions, Speeches from the Burkina Faso Revolution 1983-87, Pathfinder Press, 2007. ISBN 0-87348-989-6. Women's Liberation and the African Freedom Struggle, Pathfinder Press, 1990. ISBN 0-87348-585-8. Further reading Books Who Killed Sankara? by Alfred Cujo, 1988, University of California, ISBN 9964-90-354-5.
La Voce nel Deserto, by Vittorio Martinelli and Sofia Masai, 2009, Zona Editrice, ISBN 978-88-6438-001-8. Thomas Sankara, An African Revolutionary, by Ernest Harsh, 2014, Ohio University Press, ISBN 978-0-8214-4507-5. A Certain Amount of Madness, The Life Politics and Legacies of Thomas Sankara Black Critique by Amber Murray, 2018, Pluto Press, ISBN 978-0-7453-3758-6. Web articles Burkina Faso's Pure President by Bruno Jaffray. Thomas Sankara Lives, by Mukoma Wa Ngugi. There are seven million Sankaras by Kony Benson. Thomas Sankara, I Have a Dream, by Federico Bastiani. Thomas Sankara, Chronicle of an Organized Tragedy by Cherif M. Sai. Thomas Sankara, Former Leader of Burkina Faso by Desire Joseph Kathihabwa. Thomas Sankara, Twenty Years Later, A Tribute to Integrity by Demba Musa Dembele. Remembering Thomas Sankara, Rebecca Davis, The Daily Maverick, 2013. I Can Hear the Roar of Women's Silence. Sokari Ekin, Red Pepper, 2012. Thomas Sankara, A View of the Future for Africa and the Third World by Ameth Lowe. Thomas Sankara on the Emancipation of Women, An Internationalist Whose Ideas Live On, by Nathi M. Thethwa. Thomas Sankara, La Che Africaine by Pierre Venuate in French. Thomas Sankara e la Rivoluzione Interrota by Enrico Palumbo in Italian. Topic <inaudible> DVD. Thomas Sankara, The Upright Man, 2009, directed by Robin Shuffield, 52 minutes, CreateSpace, ASIN, B0020 EBRKC. Topic <inaudible> References. Topic. External links Media related to Thomas Sankara at Wikimedia Commons